I had this great idea for a movie. It's a madcap comedy about cramming more and more design elements into a shorter and shorter design cycle with more and more demands for intelligence in a desperate fight against discrete components. I was going to call it, Honey, I Shrunk the Design. Yeah. And then my producer tells me about copyright laws and my dreams of a geeky multi-million dollar blockbuster are dashed forever. So I guess we aren't going to be investing in that green screen, after all. Okay, maybe I won't be getting an Oscar for screenwriting anytime soon, but I should start to think about thinning down my discrete components in my next embedded design. And so should you. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. There is a huge trend in embedded computing these days to pare down our discrete components. And one of the best ways to do that is power modules. In this episode of Chalk Talk, John Woodward from Maxim Integrated joins me to talk about Maxim's Himalaya U-Slick portfolio that not only integrates several components into one power module, but also increases your power density, comes in a wide range of voltages and sizes, and requires no special manufacturing steps. Sounds great to me. Let's get started. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about Maxim's Himalaya U-Slick portfolio. Hi, John. Thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure, Amelia. Thanks for having me. So these days, my schedules are getting shorter, my designs are getting smaller, and I'm having to cram more processor power into these things with all of these other constraints. And John, I'm starting to struggle with how to power my design. So Can you help me out with that? Yeah, Amelia, you're not alone. We're hearing this more and more. Customers are having a harder time with getting the job done. They have less time. They have less manpower. They're getting constrained from a design point of view, how much space they have. Those things are heating up because they have no airflow. They're starting to add more and more intelligence in a smaller and smaller space. So things are really getting difficult for you. Are you seeing these issues in certain applications or is it more widespread? No, we see it just about everywhere. Everywhere you can think of, people are adding intelligence. They want that intelligence that they used to have in their smartphone or that they have in their tablet. And they want it in their factories. They want it in their buildings. They're adding it to their power tools and, you know, their video equipment. It doesn't matter what they're designing into. They are really adding a bunch of intelligence and that's requiring more power in a less amount of space with less heat. Okay, so what are you recommending for saving me engineering time and energy and getting all of my power requirements taken care of? The simplest solution is really a power module. And a power module is taking an IC, which could be a controller or a converter, and adding to it other passives and encapsulating it and selling it as one piece and one solution. It's really a smaller solution size. It is very dense in terms of power, and it's going to be more reliable as a customer and as a designer. So I just drop one of these in, and I don't have to be doing my own design with discrete analog components anymore? Exactly. It's less time. You can pretty much take all of the difficulty and challenges out of it, and it's simplified. You can pretty much get your power design done in half a day if you really wanted to. Okay, so I'm on board with this power module concept. Tell me more about Maxim's solutions in this space. We have a few different types of power modules, but one we really think takes advantage of the size and power density issues that a lot of customers are facing is our new MicroSlick. The MicroSlick portfolio is really a small solution, but really provides a ton of power. And we just are adding to that every day. So we've just recently introduced a 5-volt, 1-amp microslick module, and our most power-dense devices um, increasing the power up to 36 volts max VN and up to 2 amps. Okay, that's pretty slick, or (laughs) microslick. Okay, so tell me more about the whole portfolio then, besides just these new devices. So we've 
increased the portfolio from 100 milliamps up to 2 amps. And it really is broad in terms of going from 60 volts all the way down to 5 volts in a max VN. So really providing customers the input voltage they need as well as the current they need so they can minimize the amount of space and size they are designing into and provide just the right amount of power at the right amount of cost for them. And this portfolio really does provide a lot of robust and reliability with it. It has the CISPR 22 Class B conducted and radiated emission certifications. We pass drop shock and vibration standards up to JEDEC B101, 104, and 111. These packages, they do look a little bit on the strange side, but actually they are using standard manufacturing, standard reflow, standard pick and place. And we adhere Maxim's quality standards to everything we make, not just the ICs, but these modules as well. So really increasing the reliability of the whole system. So no big impact on our manufacturing process then? No, not at all. So the portfolio has really grown, like I was saying, and we span from 60 volts. We've covered from 100 milliamps up to 3 amps, 42 volts, 100 milliamps up to 300 milliamps. Our 36 volt space is where we've really increased the power density from 1 and 2 amps, 24 volts, and then 5 volts. This portfolio has really grown. We do have multiple part numbers based on current levels, but that's really to give the customers exactly what they're looking for at the different power levels and give them the ultra small solution size. Okay, I liked when you were saying earlier about the CISPR 22. EMI is certainly a concern for us. So can you tell me a little bit more about that situation? Sure. We've tried to make it as easy as possible so that when you are looking for something that's quiet and it's not going to cause any problems with the EMI testing you need to do for the overall system. We've developed our EV kit so that when we test the EV kit in the lab for CISPR 22, we're using obviously the schematics that we recommend, the components and the layout, and we test with our EV kits so that the users will actually get the exact same performance on the EV kits if they were to do the testing as we do in the lab. And the idea is that if you follow our suggestions of the components, the placement, the layouts, you really shouldn't have any issues with the EMI testing when you do it on the system if you followed our recommendations. And we leave it open to actually use our EV kits when you're doing the debug. For the radiated emissions, you don't need to do anything special. For the conducted emissions, we leave the placement areas so that you can put the components down and do the testing yourself if the debug is really an issue. Ah, that could save us a lot of hassle. So can you give me an example of MicroSlick in an application and tell me how it brings some of these benefits you've been talking about? Sure. One application is asset tracking. So asset tracking, if you can picture that, it can be something that plugs into a battery in a truck or a car. It could be purely battery operated and stick on a container on a ship. But the idea is that these things are really small. They have some sort of GPS locator, so they have some sort of radio. So they need quiet EMI, they need small space, they need high efficiency so they're not draining the batteries, they're not adding heat to the small space. And our Maxim modules, our MicroSlick modules, add very well to this application. You can basically see here we've included the main battery or a backup battery and the conversion from those batteries down to the subrails that you need for the different parts of the system, whether it's an MCU, whether it's the wireless receiver, the USB, the CAN, basically our MicroSlick modules are super small, highly efficient, and do the power conversion for all the different rails you need in the system. Okay, awesome. Now, can you give me an idea, PCB real estate-wise, how this compares with other alternatives for powering my design? So here we're looking at one of our newer devices. It's the Buck plus an LDO, not only in the same IC, but also it's in a MicroSlick module, so it has the integrated inductor as well. And we're comparing it against competition, which can be almost 150% bigger because not only do they have a module, which is for their buck, but they don't have the integrated LDO. So where customers have a single rail, which could be a high voltage, say 24 volts, and they need the LDO supply line because they want lower ripple, less noise, If they use just the LDO, you waste a lot of heat because you're losing a lot of efficiency. So here you need the buck to create the higher efficiency. You need the LDO to have the lower ripple. And we provide everything in such a small size. It's a huge advantage over competition. And what kind of feedback have you gotten from customers who have been using MicroSlick powered modules? We've had some pretty good success out in the field. And one of the customers at Banner Engineering, they make some touch lighting control buttons. And they were able to give us a quote because they love our solution size. They love the high efficiency. 
And basically you can see here, Chuck says, with Maxim's MicroSlick modules, we were able to add next generation features into the K30 illuminated touch button enclosure without increasing the size. So like I was saying, everything's adding more intelligence, things are getting smaller, but they need to add that intelligence, which requires more power. And that's where these MicroSlick modules have really added a benefit to the customers. Great. Well, thanks a lot, John. I'm going to add some next generation features to my design right now. And I'm going to click that link and go to a mauser.com page for more information. Well, John, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Amelia. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about Maxim's Himalaya U-Slick portfolio. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. 